Far in space where gravity is negligible, a 425 kilogram rocket traveling at 75 meters per second in the positive x direction fires its engines. The figure shows the thrust force as a function of time. The mass lost by the rocket during these 30 seconds is negligible. What impulse does the rocket impart or the engine impart to the rocket? Second, what time at what time does the rocket reach its maximum speed? And third, what is the maximum speed? Okay, um, since we have three parts, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, write down the, the three parts so we can kind of separate them out. Uh, let's see, black, okay. So we have part A, they want what the impulse was. Well, we know J represents the impulse, so that's what we're looking for there. Second, for part B, at what time does the rocket reach its maximum speed? So that, we're just looking for a time. And then lastly for part C, at what time, do, or what is the maximum speed? So we are looking for the final velocity of the rocket. Okay, so let's once again, since we're dealing with impulse, write up this relationship. J is equal to the average force times time, which is also equal to the change in momentum. Okay, so for the first part, for part A, uh, we can use this relationship, but you can also say that since we have this graph as a function of force against time, that the area under this curve right here, all this space, that will also give us the impulse. So we have a triangle here, and so for J, here, let me write a part A right there. For J, we are going to look for the area under the curve. So we know that the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. One half base times height. So let me rewrite this. J is equal to one half the base. Well, the base is 30 seconds times the height, and they tell us that the height is a thousand newtons. So let's simplify this a little bit. We have one half, 30 times a thousand is 30,000. So one half of 30,000 newton seconds will give us the impulse. And give us a little room, and one half of 30 is 15. So J for part A is 15,000 Newton seconds. All right, so moving on, part C, or C, geez, B's. For part B, <laughs> man, I can't talk today. For part B, at what time does the rocket reach its maximum speed? Okay, so when we look at this graph, it's really tempting because we're so used to velocity versus times graphs, time graphs, to look at this and be like, well, that's easy. Right here at 10 seconds is with the where it's going its fastest, because that's the, the point when the graph is highest. But we have to think about what this graph is telling us. This graph is telling us how much force is applied over time. So right here, at zero seconds, the rocket is not moving or whatever. I, th I think they tell us it's moving along at this, right? Yeah, 75 meters per second. So then, it fires its engine, so it's going faster. So this graph tells us how much force that rock, rocket has on it by its engines. So it's still getting pushed by the, the rocket and right, or by the engine, and right here is where the most force is being pushed on the rocket by the engine. But it's still being pushed this entire time by the engine. And so right here before 30 seconds, it's still being pushed forward by the rocket, by the, the engine, and they tell us gravity is negligible. So we can assume that when the rocket has the engine cut out, that's when it's going the fastest. So it cuts out at 30 seconds, so for part B, your answer is going to be that the fastest, or the time that it reaches its fastest speed, or its maximum speed, is 30 seconds. 
All right, now last one, what is the maximum speed? Okay, so now is here is where we're gonna use our beloved little relationship right here. J equals average force times time, which equals the change in momentum. So we already figured out what J is, so we know that. And we want the final velocity. Well, which one of these has final velocity in it? We know that P is equal to mass times velocity, so we're probably gonna use delta P. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And I'm instead of writing delta P again, I'm just going to put P final minus P initial for delta P. All right, now we want final. So for this initial, I'm going to go ahead and isolate the final velocity. So J, I'm going to add over PI to both sides, PI. So J plus the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. Now I'm going to break that up. So we have J plus the initial momentum is equal to the final mass times the final velocity. And they tell us up here in the question, they say the mass lost by the rocket during these 30 seconds is negligible. So the final mass will be the same as the initial mass. So let's divide that over those go away and the final mass is right there okay so now we've isolated what we want so let's rewrite that so the final velocity is equal to the impulse plus the initial momentum divided by the final mass or the mass in this case and then let's go ahead and plug it in so v final is equal to 15 thousand newton seconds Put another parenthesis and then we're going to add let's see what was the 425 kilograms 425 kilograms times the initial velocity which was 75 meters per second so we're going to add those two together and divide that number by the mass, which is 425 kilograms. So when we do the math on all of that, we end up with 110.3 meters per second.